but what can I do this quarter to work more towards my unique abilities, things that give me more energy when I'm done doing them than when I started. And also so I can really unleash myself in this world better by being more energized in the work that I do and get other people that love to do the stuff I'm, I don't love to do, get other people to do that work that energizes them. And this thing, this process can change your life. All right, welcome to the show, Trevor. Chris, what's up, man? Thanks for the invite. Really awesome to have you here. Uh, before we get into the energy audit itself, I would love for you to share your story with the Two Brain Radio audience. Man, so I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm an entrepreneur, and I know you, you and I, we met uh, in an entrepreneur's group, and the first time we actually had a chance to meet in person was up in Toronto, and, and I, I know for me, like everyone on, on listening to this, or most people listening to this, you, you're entrepreneurs, right? And, and, and we become entrepreneurs for a couple of reasons. It's like, we want the freedom, and we want the flexibility that, that comes with hopefully owning your own company. Um, hopefully, the finances come with it, right? That's not always everyone's number one, but most of us also eventually want impact. And um, you got freedom, flexibility, finances, and impact. That's why we become entrepreneurs usually. And the, the short of the long of it is this, that yeah, I own a software company today, but I've kind of been a serial entrepreneur over the years. And I don't, I don't hang that as a badge of honor. Honestly, I thought I used to, <laughs> but today I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I, I so wish I wasn't a serial entrepreneur because I, I have had so much more joy when I'm able to focus on few things rather than a lot of things. And so I think this is what relates to people listening to this, to this most. And the reason why you brought me on here was uh, up in Toronto, I shared an exercise that, that I do um, almost every quarter. I wouldn't say that I do it every quarter. Cause there are certain things like, I, I know I need to, but almost every quarter. And when I did this exercise during this phase of my life where um, I was making some, some good money as a mid 20 something year old guy, uh, but I was miserable. You know, I was like, I, I, I just was not enjoying my work. Um, I was getting paid decently well for work that people said I was really good at. But the problem was it didn't fire me up. It like zapped my energy out of me. And uh, when, I, when you kind of go back to what I, what I talked about before, that we become entrepreneurs because we want freedom and flexibility and impact and finances. Um, when you're doing work that zaps your energy and also when you're doing work in, in a business that has a boom and bust business model, you could, your, your, your tax return at the end of the year could look amazing. You can have, you can be making great money, but during the year you're stressed out. You're on the edge of your seat every single month, wondering how am I going to make the income the next month? Because it's, it's not, it's not consistent and predictable. Right. And then you lose your freedom. You lose your flexibility. You might have the finances there and then you don't have the wherewithal mental capacity or time to make an impact or the impact that you want to make. And that was, you know, kind of the nexus of, of, of when I had to make a change, a drastic change in, uh, in 2011, 2010, 11, 12. And, you know, like I said, dur during that time, there's a few things that happened, but my brother's best friend, uh, Nick, he, he, um, he had three kids at the time. He's early thirties. I'm 35 right now. It's the time I record this with three kids. There's a lot of parallels in there. Yeah, yeah. And um, at that time I had one, maybe two, yeah, probably one, one, one kid for sure. The second one close to being on the way. Hmm. And um, you know, like a lot of us do, we're kind of forecasting out there for decades. We're going, here's what I think retirement's going to look like. And what if we do this and let's start saving up for this and da, 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 da. And he was in his backyard um, on a Sunday, on a weekend, on a weekend, day, the day, you know, they were talking about this stuff. And um, uh, while they're projecting out 20 years, they didn't know he wasn't going to make it for dinner that night. He, uh, he had a brain wow. aneurysm in his backyard and wow. passed away right there on the spot. And at that time it hit me, you know, that, that, that was the part of my life where I'm like, man, I'm doing all this work that I'm getting paid okay for. Um, but I'm like miserable, you know, I'm not having fun. I'm, I'm, I'm like, even the money I am making, it doesn't feel all that fulfilling because my work itself is more of a chore. Um, it's interesting. There's stuff that's interesting in it, but it didn't fire me up. Like your work should fire you up more often than not. Yeah. And so I, I, I met with a mentor this is in 2012 and he said, man, he goes, you've got to, you've got to figure out what your unique ability is you know, your unique ability. And I've heard that phrase before. And a lot of people call it different things, unique ability, um, you know, superpower, all kinds of things like that. And no matter what it is, I had a tough time finding mine because this over here is what people paid me for. 
and I made okay money. I had pretty good money at it, but it zapped my energy. These things over here that I really, really liked, I'm like, how do I make money doing those things? I couldn't, I couldn't piece them together. You know, I'm like, this makes me money. I've got a skill set here and people say I'm good at it. This over here doesn't make me money, but that actually is what I like to do and what gives me energy. Strategy, but no execution. You know, um, coaching people on things that I'm passionate about, um, other things like that. And so this one thing that he told me um, really made it click for me. He's like, um, your unique ability isn't necessarily the things that you're really good at that you get paid well for. Um, that's a misnomer. Your unique ability is the things that you're really good at. You could be world-class at them if you'd like really worked hard, but you have more energy when you're done doing them than when you started. You have more energy when you're done doing them than when you started. And so I started to kind of take mental note, you know, and I, and I literally at that time, the, the, the line down the middle trick is like the best trick in the world where all of a sudden it's black and white. You know, you've got whatever you want to put on either side pros and cons, good and bad, whatever. In this case, I did the line down the middle of a blank piece of paper. And I encourage everyone listening to this to grab a piece of paper and do this. I'm going to walk you through what I call the energy audit that changed my life and draw a line down the middle. And basically on the left side, I put things that gave me energy. You know, when I'm done doing those things, those are the things that gave me energy. Uh, let me kind of reverse really fast too, um, to show you the impact of this now. So then I was making, you know, low, low six figures, early 20 something year old guy, probably 80% of the time in my work, 75 to 80% of the time was draining my energy, but it gave me good money. And I, that was my excuse to keep doing it. And I'm like, maybe if I just keep working harder and make more money, then everything will be great. I'll be happier. I'll be more fulfilled. And that, did, that wasn't the case. Um, today, you know, this exercise literally 10 X my income, 10 X my net profit well into the, 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 the seven figures as far as my net taxable income today. And I'm not saying that to sound cool. I'm saying it because this process unlocked that, you know, once I was able to work on things that gave me energy more often than not, that stuff really amplified the world. Like it just made everything way better. So I want you guys to get this. I want you to amplify what's possible within you, your income, your happiness, your impact, your business, all that stuff, your family. So draw a line in the middle. Left side, I would do a, um, a brain dump of everything that gave me energy in life, not just your, your work. And that was one thing that was a mistake I, made, I did before is I would just write down things that gave me energy in work. The problem was I wasn't doing much of those. Hmm. Right, so the list was short. I'm like, well, this thing gives me, like, I like that kind of gives me energy, but I forgot these seven other things that just in general give me energy in life that I'm just not doing because I don't have the time to do them. And so write down all the things that give you energy in life. I mean, it could literally be um, having a conversation with this person. It could be strategy, you know, it's, you know, coming up with strategy and big ideas. It could be working out, right? I mean, that's yeah. a perfect one for your audience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so write all those things down. And then on the right side, Write the things that you're currently doing right now on a given week that are draining your energy. So, but when you get done doing the thing, even if someone says you're really good at it, even if that's the way you're currently making money, even if people say you're great at it, do you have less energy when you're done doing that? One of those things for me was eating unhealthy foods. Like it wasn't just, Hey, this type of work is like, man, if I have a burger, it just, I just feel like crap next hour. So I wrote that on there. Um, having conversations, certain conversations with, with certain types of people drain my energy. Doing this type of work, like for me, execution of marketing. Oh, I hate it, man. Like it kills me. Coming up with marketing ideas, dude, I'll do that all day long. Um, so I have my list. My list, my energy draining list is always bigger. Always bigger. Um, for some reason. And so I got for a year or two and it worked. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm taking stock of this. It, it's work. And I at least recognize what gives me energy and not. And so I could kind of start to guide some of my practices, but there's still something missing. So what, what, what I did at that point, Chris, is I'm like, okay, so let me like put percentages here. Let me, you know, let me just put a percentage on any given week. What percentage of my time is being used on energy giving stuff, the stuff on the left versus stuff on the right. And at that time it was 80% energy draining, 20% energy giving. Wow. I mean, it was like literally that. Yeah, I wasn't doing podcasts like this. I love doing this stuff, talking about topics I want to talk about. Nice. Um, I was doing a lot of execution, a little bit of strategy. I wasn't working out at that time consistently. Um, I wasn't eating bad, but I wasn't eating energy giving foods much. You know, like hmm. all those things. 
And so I'm like, okay, man, this is a real big problem. There's no way I can be fired up and happy and fulfilled and have freedom, flexibility, the finances that, that we all deserve and make the impact if I'm like, most of my work is draining my energy. And so I said, okay, my aim is to every single quarter move the needle. I want to move it from energy draining to energy giving every quarter. And I think if I can do that every quarter, it's not all going to happen at once, but if I can do it every quarter for the next year, two, three, four years, my life is going to change. My impact is going to change. My income is going to change. And I'll finally gain freedom, flexibility that I wanted to get as an entrepreneur and impact. And so I did that. So I had my percentages. Next quarter, I'd do it again. And I go, okay, what's the best way I can actually move the needle? And I started to circle things in the energy draining side of things. I'm like, okay, let me just circle those two. Those two are the, the biggest pain in the butt for me right now. Now let me put how many hours a week I'm spending in each one of those. This one's four hours. This one's seven. Sweet. That's 11 hours a week I'm spending just in these two things that are killing me right now. But then I wasn't giving myself mental permission to not do them before because they made me money. I'm like, if I don't do those, who's going to do them? And also my income is gone. So I kept on doing them before. But this time I'm like, okay, I have to not do those anymore because Nick passed away. That gave me a new sense of urgency. I'm like, there's no guarantee I'm going to be here tomorrow, next week, next year. Um, I need to serve my family, my community, myself way better than I am right now. It, it was almost one of those things where it wasn't me – saying, oh, poor me. It was like, I had this mindset, Chris, of I'm wasting Nick's time for every day that I live on this earth, that I'm not uh, uh, living my best and working within my, my, my unique abilities. I'm wasting wow. Nick's time. And so that's what I did, man. And I would circle those and, you know, first quarter, I'm like, once again, this one's four hours, this one's seven, add it up. There's 11 hours I can regain, but I'm like, how do I give myself permission to do those? Well, uh, over here on the energy giving side, I'm going to circle one thing that I really want to add to my calendar that I'm not doing right now, you know, working out or uh, just strategy, you know, or I just want to do podcasts. Like uh, in uh, two years ago, I wasn't doing any podcasts. I kind of got into a bad energy funk. And I'm like, I did the energy audit. I circled um, podcasts. I loved it when I hopped on podcasts and did this kind of thing um, so I can give to people. But I wasn't doing it hardly <laughs> ever. And I'm like, well, I'm not doing it because it doesn't make me money, you know? So I wouldn't give myself that permission to do it. So what I did was the thing that was draining my energy is writing articles, writing long form articles at that time. I was good at it, it made me money. So I'm like, okay, how can I pay someone to write articles for me that it's really good, they're an amazing person, and I can just do podcasts? And it doesn't make financial sense, you know, but I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to free up eight hours a week right here. Hire this amazing content writer. Who's now the editor in chief at, at uh, Shopify up right. there in Canada. Like he's the editor in chief of their blog now. And he wow. was my content writer two years ago. Um, and so I paid him a thousand bucks an article, which sounds crazy. Everyone would look at it and go, why would you do that? You can get someone for way cheaper. I'm like it wasn't about the words. Like I wanted someone who was quality. I'm buying my time. So I can go do podcasts and things that give me energy. And I did that. And like, and then that amplified me that next level. So going all the way back to 2012, those next four years completely changed my life because every single quarter, my energy got traded. It got traded from energy draining to energy giving every quarter. And it marched up to today on average, when I take the energy audit, it's more like 75 to 80, uh, 85% energy giving work and then 15 to 20% uh, energy draining work now. And wow. I think all of us have to do work that's energy draining. There's no way, like if you're a unicorn rider and you love unicorns, like you're still going to have work that kind of sucks in there, right? Um, yeah. So this isn't about 100% energy uh, all the time. It's about making sure that we're intentional with where we spend our time, using a process every single 15 minutes a quarter, every single quarter to guide your actions that quarter to go, okay, I know this isn't going to be immediate, but what can I do this quarter? to work more towards my unique abilities, things that give me more energy when I'm done doing them than when I started. And also so I can really unleash myself in this world better by being more energized in the work that I do and get other people that love to do the stuff I'm, I don't love to do, get other people to do that work that energizes them. And this thing, this process can change your life. So Trevor, you know, when you're starting this process, obviously you're starting to pay people to work that you know, to do work that you know that you're all really good at. Mm -hmm. What's the, what's the thought process that goes through your mind? Because I'm sure it's not just as simple as saying like, no, nope, I'm not going to do this anymore. Right. I'm sure you must go back and forth a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of tough, right? Like, especially when you first start doing it, because now, now for me, it's way easier where yeah. I can just do quick, simple math. I know the value of my time now. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm not doing that. And, and there's still a lot of things I do today that drain my energy 
Um, but I just kind of need to do them until I get them systemized or get someone else to do them. But at the early, at the early phase, um, the thing that worked best for me was, was there was a couple things like number one, figure out the value of your time, you know? So yeah. that's something that, uh, there's a really good book, 80, 20 marketing by Perry Marshall. And he's not the first one that wrote, um, an art, uh, a graph like this, but he has this chart like three quarters of the way through the book that basically says, um, $10 an hour work, hundred dollar an hour work, um, let's say $500 an hour work, a thousand, $5,000 an hour work. And then he lists the type of activities that fit within those thresholds. And it was really cool. Cause I looked at him like, Oh my gosh, most of the work I'm doing at that time was like $10 or a hundred dollar an hour work. How can I ever expect to get to this income? And so that was one thing right there is recognize the value of my time. If I want to get to this spot, I need to be doing more things that are $5,000 and $1,000 an hour value work. And Dan actually did an exercise on this in, in, in coaching. Like, yeah. I love to walk through that. So that's the first thing. You got to understand the value of your time because what we'll do is we oftentimes think about it the wrong way was we, we go, and this is what I did at the start. So I'm like, okay, I know I don't like doing that thing, but I'm bringing home, let's make up a number. Let's say I'm bringing home five grand a month. <clears throat> that's my net profit. Man, I don't want to bring home 4,500 a month. You know, if, if I'm going to pay this person 500 a month to do that, that takes 500 a month out of my pocket. Like, I didn't want to do that. Yeah. But then as, as soon as I started realizing going, okay, so every minute that I spend doing these things that are lower value is a minute that I, I'm spending that I can't be using my unique ability to really build more value. And as soon as I started going, oh my gosh, that's the ticket is even if, even if I don't um, directly right now have a, have a way to make money from this more higher value, unique ability type of work, podcast as an example, I don't sell advertising on podcasts, none of that. I've probably made 500,000 bucks this last year and a half just for my podcast because, because people get wrapped into the ecosystem. They buy into our business, our business care it more because of the energy, the mission, the purpose behind the words in the podcast. So yeah, figure out the value of your time. Um, uh, that's a biggie. And then give yourself permission to then plug someone in to do that stuff. So you can go over here and go, okay, now I'm able to be higher level, which is going to be worth a lot more than that 500 bucks a month I'm paying over there. This works for home stuff too, right? House cleaning, um, all those kinds of things. Back then, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to pay 200 bucks a month for house cleaning, another X and you know, whatever it is. And, and now we, we bought a, a, a bigger house on the river and it has you know, like an acre of manicured yard. And it came with a, lawn, a riding lawnmower. And I'm like, cool, me and the kids get to ride the ride lawnmower and it'd be fun. And I got like halfway through mowing that thing and the kids got tired and then it became a chore. I'm like, ah, this isn't how I want to spend my Sundays. No. 500 bucks a month for a yard person is worth it now. It wasn't two years ago or five years ago. So you start with the lowest price rolls and start getting those off your plate first. Yeah. I mean the, the lowest price rolls and also the ones that honestly is drain the most energy from me because I, I think one thing that people don't, don't realize and I didn't at the start is every minute that you spend doing that thing that is just sucking the life out of you is actually making you worse at the other parts of your job. Um, so if you're spending that hour doing something that's just killing you, can you imagine when you shift gears to the thing that you really love to do, it's going to be harder to shift gears into it because like you're mentally drained before you even start the thing. Um, right. so that, that, that's, that's one way I look at it too. It's like, what's killing me the most right now. And even if it isn't the lowest dollar thing, I know that it's probably costing me the most money because it's costing me the most energy and just happiness in the rest of my day. Right. So what if, what if an employee came to you, Trevor, and said like, Hey, I just did my energy audit and half my job is stuff that drains my energy. I could be more effective doing just this stuff. Like how yep. would you do with that? <laughs> That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Cause <laughs> I, I do walk through and do the energy audit with our team. Um, same thing. Uh, we, we could be a lot more consistent and better. And, and it's usually honestly, like it usually comes up when there's a problem. Um, it, the, the energy audit right now hasn't been as proactive with our team members as I would like it to be, to be but it's usually okay. when they go, man, I'm drained, I'm burnt out, something like that, or I'm nearing burnout, which doesn't happen much, but it does happen. Sure. Um, so then we go through an energy audit and get them back on the right track. But usually um, that, that does come up. Like here's these five things that they've got to do in their work. That's what they're hired for um, that's draining their energy. And there's this thing over here that they love, but it's not in their job position. And that's happened. I, I wouldn't say that I've like nailed it, but what usually works pretty darn good in that situation is I'll go, okay, so these things over here, uh, just uh, number one, a meeting of minds, right? Like the, you're, you're, you're making a big impact on the business by doing these things. Now, 
It may not give you energy right now, but I can tell you the impact you're making for our team, for our clients, it's big, it's real. So I connect them to mission and that that work matters, first of all. Because if you're doing work that matters, um, you, you can push through hard things way better. Um, if those things, if they, if they were doing those things, they drain their energy and they didn't really matter to the company, they're going to be like, well, why am I doing this stuff? And it's going to make it even worse for them. So make, make sure that they know why that matters, the whole mission and vision of the company. Number two, I would go, okay, what's like the worst thing on here for you? Because if, if, they if, they, if, they, if they're hating that thing really bad, they're probably not doing that great a job at it anyway. You're yeah, kind of doing a half-assed effort. So I'd say like, what's the worst out of all of these ones? And then how many hours a week is that, is that taking you? I'm like, okay, is that something that we can get someone else from the, the other part of the team who might look at it in a different way to create a process around it? So an example there was an issue um, probably three or four months ago around some of the billing things. We own a software company around some of the billing things um, that were being way too manual. And this team member of ours, Andre, she was spending a lot of time on it and you could tell it was draining her. And she, she thought about it a certain way, but pr- there, with people looking at it from different angles, they saw different ways to get it done. So we're like, okay, that's draining your energy. Let's bring in Chris and let's bring in Austin, our developers, programmers who just look at things process wise and have them watch you, watch you do this thing you're doing, like watch over your shoulders. And so they did. And like, Oh, well, what? they're like, why don't you do, just do that? And then do this. And she's like, I don't know. I'm just, this is kind of the way that we've done it. And da, da, da. And he goes, Oh, well shoot. Yeah. Just give me like a half a day and we'll go do this, 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 this. And then they did a software solution that like solved half of that time. Wow. Like, Whoa. So that, that's one of the most empowering things is when you, when you have an employee that brings that stuff to you, recognize it, Show them that the work is important. If it is important, if it's not, stop doing it. Like just say, this isn't, just let's stop doing it. If it is important, then go, okay, what's the one that's draining you the most? Because they're probably not doing a job. Bring in someone else with a different way of thinking about it. Can you create a process system or outsource that so that person can stop doing that? They're going to keep doing the other two that drain their energy because they have to at this point. But then can you do the same with that? Then what I like to do next is I like to shift it over and go, okay, now over here on the energy giving stuff, um, are you doing a lot of that? Like, is there something that we can kind of, let's, let's, mm. let's, let's ch- chat with your team lead over here. Can we borrow two hours a week for the next four weeks from you and get you over here and help with this? And so that's something that I do quite often. Actually, I had a call yesterday with Grady on my team on that exact thing right there is he loves mapping out process and flow. Um, but he's kind of getting bogged down on something else. So I had a call with him to kind of gauge feel for it. Like, sweet, we have something over here that's really important that we could really use you for in that skill set. Let me chat with your team lead. Let me see if we can borrow you for like five hours over the next three weeks. And then it worked. And then he's coming over here, here to help with it and he's pumped about it. Cool. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, so last question, Trevor, because I know your time is super valuable, man. Um, when you started moving the creative work off your plate, you know, you, you're a really good long form blog writer, um, and you had to hire somebody to replace you there. Mm-hmm. Did you have the fear of like, ah, oh, this brand is going to lose my voice or nobody can replace the way that I do this? Uh, yeah, 100%, 100%, man. And yeah. even today, like that long form content still doesn't kind of have the oomph that, that it had when I was writing. And it's not that I'm a better writer. Like, but our, our writers are far superior than I am as a writer. It was mainly because they didn't have the insight into the problems that our, our client has at the deep level because I am one of our clients. Yeah. They aren't. And, and that's not a them issue. It's a, we're not educating our writers as well as we should issue. Hmm. Uh, so that's still there. But on, on the flip side of it, uh, we get way more people listening to the podcast now that I traded that energy that time for. And, and it's a way better opportunity to build culture, to build that voice uh, than the articles were for me. And so I'm okay. Wow. I'm okay with at this time, the articles not having the oomph that, that they used to have my voice, you know, that kind of unique voice because mm-hmm. my voice is over here. And, and even though our podcast isn't large, you know, the carrot cast, it's not large. Um, but by comparison, we get more listens on the podcast every month than we got, than we got reads of our new articles, our fresh articles. Hmm. Um, and also I just have much more energy doing it. So uh, I have more fun. People can sense my excitement behind it. And it's just really, really ramped up the, the adoption of our culture with our clients. That's so awesome, man. Okay. Well, Hey, Trevor, thank you so much for your time and explaining this. And uh, I'm going to deliver this to the two brain family right away. And I know they're going to love it too. Awesome, man. I, dude, I appreciate the invite. And one thing I, I want to encourage everyone on is, is this is no matter what kind of business you have, you know, whether if you have a fitness business or a software company or it doesn't matter what it is, 
give yourself the credit for actually achieving and living the entrepreneurial dream, the freedom, the flexibility, get those finances in place because it makes freedom flexibility way easier. And then uh, make that impact. And you can only do that when you're working with your, your unique abilities more often than not, you build a consistent predictable revenue model and uh, you, you just give yourself that permission to stop doing those things or draining your energy, have someone else do them and shift it over to energy giving activities. It's going to change your life and the impact you're able to make to your clients. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Trevor. Hey, thanks, buddy. Mm-hmm.